Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at integrating the Cisco Firepower 1010 with FMCV, the Firepower Management Center Virtual Edition. I currently have an FTD or Firepower 1010 device here and an FMCV instance here. For FTD we have 6.7. For integration on 6.7 we have to use the command line. In one of the 7.0 updates, we will now have the ability to integrate using FTD GUI, which will be redone at the end of this video. Let's head to the Devices tab and to Device Management within FMC. You see that we don't have any FTD devices currently attached to FMC. Let's head over to PuTTY and connect to the CLI of our FTD Firepower 1010 appliance. After saying yes to our RSA2 key fingerprint issue, we can log in using the default admin account. I'm currently running 6.7.0, which at this point is an older version, but we'll check out the newer version later. To add an FTD device to FMC, we need to go to Configure Manager. From here, you see we have the ability to add, delete, edit and make manager as local. If you have an FMC managing your FTD, you can come here to configure the manager as local to remove it from FMC. So let's add FMC by typing the IP address the registration key and then hit yes to continue. We will have some info here if you enabled any feature licenses, you must disable them in Firepower Device Manager before deleting the local manager. What this means. If you enable, say, the Threat Detection License, you need to disable that before continuing or you may have some Cisco Smart Software Manager issues. So back to FMC, let's add a new device. In adding the FTD, we provide the host IP address its display name, the registration key we configured earlier, if it's part of a group, and we must configure an access control policy. We may choose here any smart licensing features such as malware, threat, and URL filtering. I will choose threat as I have this license. We also have the ability to specify a unique NAT ID if necessary, and we'll leave the transfer packets checked. The transfer packets option is used to send packets to FMC in case that certain events are triggered, such as snort detected pattern events that can be sent to FMC. Now we click register. And we'll start to see notifications in the right hand corner. Register for registration, starting registration of the device. Uh, if we have an appliance heartbeat issue, it'll tell us if communication has been established. If we have discovery from the device that's in progress, it'll tell us if we have the SF tunnel connection being established, our health policy, applying the initial health policy that's applied to the appliance, policy pre-deployment so we can take a snapshot of the device, and other various things that come across. We see that the deployment is pending. If we hover over the new device, we see it is listed and its various information. Cisco Firepower 1010 Threat Defense version 6.7.0.1. If we go back to the FTD FDM and hit refresh, we will now not have access to manage that device locally. So let's click on the device in FMC and you'll notice that we have various information come across. We have access to the interfaces that were discovered. Uh, we have inline sets and of course the various routing options OSPF, OSPF version 3, RIP, and BGP. You also see static routes as well as multicasting listed here. So once the device is fully managed via FMC here on the CLI, we can do all of our configurations from the central management. Here in a few moments we'll also show how to integrate using the uh, 7.0 GUI Okay, so now we're back at the FDM GUI, Locally Managed Firepower Device. You may notice that we don't have management server connectivity listed right away. We have to view extra system settings by clicking the See More link here. You will notice an option for Management Center. Once we click on Management Center, we'll have some warnings to accept or not. 
One thing I absolutely cannot stand about Cisco is this first one here. How can Cisco not have the ability to import existing configurations? It seems by managing FTD with FMC we lose everything except interface configurations. I mean, how do we have a company that's been working on this firepower for Lord knows how long, and we can only bring in interface configuration? I'm hoping that'll change uh, in one of the next iterations. It would be really cool if we could kind of export that into FMC, and then we won't have to reconfigure the device from scratch, or uh, configure all the access control first, and then apply it later. Anyway, we can no longer manage the FTD locally, and FMC must register the new device. Once we click Proceed and Continue, we'll be taken to a page that asks familiar questions. Keep in mind that you will acknowledge that the device will be unregistered from the Smart Licensing server, as FMC will further manage all licenses for the registered device. Alright, configure connection to FMC. If you don't know the FMC hostname or IP address at time of integration, you can specify as such, and FMC will have to be configured to create the connection. Only an FMC registration key will be required if you choose this option. Otherwise, selecting yes will give us the ability to specify the hostname or IP address, and we again have the ability to specify the NAT ID Here's where things get a little bit different. Integrating FMC from the FTD GUI allows us to specify the hostname, DNS server group, and most importantly, the FMC access interface, which can either be the out-of-band management or the in-band data interfaces. I don't have management interface configured, so I'll specify the interface with routing to the FMC. Lastly, you will get a prompt with some additional information and tasks to accomplish. Add a static route through data management interface so the FTD can reach FMC and optionally add a dynamic DNS entry. If FTD does not have a route to FMC if they're not like on the same subnet, uh, you'll need this route to allow it to you know, get to that FMC server. Now once we hit connect, it will go through the process we saw previously on the CLI. So hey, thanks for watching our video on FTD FMC integration. Uh, we'll be creating a video discussing all the features of FMC, kind of like my introduction to Cisco Firepower. So stay tuned, and we'll see you later.